1966 RCA CTC 25 XAA uh, analysis and resurrection. In a previous video, I picked up two of these identical from a storage unit. Uh, one of them, the other one was necked, meaning the neck is broken off the back of the, the picture tube. And uh, this one's in pretty rough shape too. I don't know if the CRT is cracked on this one or what. We're going to dig into it. The other one, the flyback, is fried, the CRT. So this one looks like it was handled pretty rough. Um, there's a lot of stuff broken here. I think there's supposed to be a little nub that this is supposed to have gone to. Yeah, I think, I think something is broken here. I'm not quite sure. The tuner looks okay. The television looks okay from the front. The two of the legs, the two rear legs are busted off. Uh, I can fix these. I have the other pieces. I can glue and screw them and make those as strong as original. Looks like everything's here. What I want to do is just try and power it up. We'll dim bulb it. We will even dim bulb the... For some reason the tuner is separate. This has got... This can definitely go away. We don't use no UHF loop no more. This has got these really cool speakers, as I showed in the first video. The tuner is all solid state, AM, FM, stereo. Uh, it's got a crappy Lindell horizontal output tube. I don't know, it almost maybe, it was handled very rough, obviously. Typical RCA CTC-17 style chassis. These are relatively easy to fix, relatively reliable, except the, the baking circuit boards and crapping out flybacks. The rest, the rest of it's pretty good. So there's the cord for the, the uh, television chassis. I kind of broke this putting it in the truck. That's a focus knob. So let's start by testing the... Uh, the uh, propaganda bulb. Yeah, it needs to be refinished. I do have a use for this. I'm actually gonna possibly put this in service, if you could believe that, if it works. Of course, it'll need to be cleaned up. Just sand the top and use some of that Verithane with stain and just brush it on it. I mean, this is not in great shape. The veneer is damaged. So it looks like it's got a cigarette burn. It's been initiated. So other than that, let's see if there's any hope. I really don't have very high hopes here, but you never know. That's why you test. to come up. I'm only at 3 volts right now. Let's come up to about there. Holy crap, what's the hell? Okay, what is going on with that? Oh, leakage. We have all of those, all of those lights are flashing. Let's see, what, what's wrong with that picture? Um, and if you watch this, watch what these meters do when I go to cut off. Some of them peg backwards. 
Ooh, so what is up with this? Is this gassy? I don't want to... I'm going to go to... Uh... I think what we need to do is we need to look at this... Let me double check and make sure I got the right socket on here. Let's see, four, and this is a 25 XP 22, right? According to this, it's socket three. Eee. Okay, let's try that again with socket three. We have no flashing lights now. Ooh, look at that. Look at the cutoff. Wow. Could this CRT really be that good? Okay, bring him up and cut off one small notch. Holy crap. This thing's like brand new. And I'm not even at 6.3 volts. Let's go up to 6.3 volts. No leakage lights, that's good. Let's come down to uh, 4.7 volts here. Very happy CRT. Very happy sunshine smile CRT. Like brand new, like they put it in and never use the set. Look at that on 4.7 volts. Wow. I'm going to dim bulb the solid state tuner to start. Even though it's solid state, it still has filter capacitors that need to be reformed. So I have 7 watt, 11 watt, 15 watt, and 40 watt. We'll start with the 7. And it lit up pretty bright. Let's make sure the uh, make sure this is off. And the light went off. That's okay. So let's see. We're on AM, FM, FM stereo. Uh, pull on. Why do I get no light? Ooh. Sounds like we're getting hum. Yep, hum. Getting a little... little activity there but gotta wait for the transistors to reactivate sounds good Let's, there doesn't appear to be anything reforming. If anything, they're all gone. Let's go to an 11. This is a s s sign bulb. There we go.
Usted, con el plan de membresía dental de California Dental Group, usted estará cubierto y ya podrá usted estar cómodo sabiendo de que cualquier cosa que le llegue a surgir con el tiempo está cubierto con nosotros. Oh, the smell that just started to emanate from this thing. That's a new one, actually. Wow. Smells like burning laundry detergent. Really, something's burning with an 11 watt limiting light bulb? Oh my, this has issues. This has issues, a lot of issues. What a bypass? Can't really tell, doesn't really sound like there's anybody home there. But yeah, this has got issues. Okay, it sounds like FM is working. Okay, filter capacitors, cleaning and filter capacitors. Usually these receivers are not in this bad a shape, but this thing, I think, as we discussed in the first video, was extremely high hour. So next part, what we're going to do, we, we know what's wrong with this. To start, we need to go through and check all the capacitors. So start capacitors. And not just the filters, but probably all of them. So I'm going to go to a 60 watt bulb here. I'm going to unplug this. This is the receiver. We'll take that off a of bypass. We'll come back here, here, and we'll take the horizontal output tube out. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the television portion. Get this out of the sun. And we get nothing. Then what we do is we figure out where is the power. Here we go. Well...
there we go and we're at full brightness there wow let me get a voltmeter let me do this back this off looks like the filament in that bulb tipped off to one side got my voltmeter AC voltmeter hooked up there let's see what we got here got 30 it's really weird how that's flickering like that seems like something shorted I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. It's weird how it's fluctuating. I think some of the fluctuating is this right here. Oh, when I move this around, you can see it fluctuate. So this is a bad, this, is, this thing is dirty. I get it in the, this thing is dirty. Yeah, it's arcing here. Bad connection. Like really bad. What I'm gonna do is go up to a 150 watt bulb. I don't think that's quite pushing it hard enough. So we're, we're feeding it approximately half the line voltage. I'll just let it sit for a few minutes. Well, it's been sitting like this for about an hour. I had to go in and do like the fourth edit of one of the WION videos because you got to keep cutting and cutting and cutting to get the, the music chopped up so that it doesn't get content ID'd. It's actually not a copyright strike. That's not a correct it's just content ID and it gets demonetized but anyway you got to just keep cutting the music up so that it can't ID it anyway so I think we're maxed out here at 70 volts so let me see if anything no I don't feel anything warm there so let's go up to a Ooh, the light bulbs kind of warm mm, bakey bakey how about this here I think this is either a two or three hundred. Gives us 96 volts. Just let it kind of cook right there for a little bit. This doesn't seem to have capacitors that need to be reformed. This seems to have capacitors that are just completely baked out. Baked. I'll go up to a 500 watt bulb next. We'll put a plate current meter on the horizontal output. It's very humid out here today. There was a storm yesterday, so everything is wet, which is not a good time to fire up an old TV, but nah, whatever. I'm going to pull this out. In fact, I need to figure out how to do that. So it looks like what happens is this pulls off the top and then there's some screws that well it looks like it falls down through the bottom but it doesn't look like that from up here does it no it's got to come out through the top wow has it never been out i think i just popped it ooh virginie Discharge. I think I just popped it. Oops. So it's never. So how did it, how does it come out? I 
I don't quite understand this. Ooh. What the? TV make noise? What are we at here? 92 volts. See the, I believe the TV runs through, which is good because if I can get the TV to work, that'll test the speakers. The switch here. Not quite sure how that works. It appears the TV uses the big speakers. All right. TV is just going nuts over here. Now this speaker on the radio is very distorted, but it doesn't sound like it's rubbing, so it must be something in the amp. All right, don't try this at home, boys and girls, because you can get a real nice burn off doing this. And yeah, I'm still on the light bulb, so let's see, I'm gonna connect this to here. Oh, meter failure. Told you it's humid. Oh. Huh. So we're going to play some wonky game. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. Let's try this one. It goes to 300. We should be about 200 on this. And we are at 120. And that seems... I'm going to go to the 500 watt bulb. 500 watt bulb is still coming down below 100 volts. Well, let's see. Sounds like we might have high voltage. Oh, yes we do. We do have high voltage. Where's the brightness on this chassis? So we have no vert... Ooh, that was weird. So the focus is very soft, and look at that over there, look at that. Now this is vertical, and it does move it around a little bit. I'm going to pull the brightness down, that's actually, where is the brightness? Tone, vertical. Oh, this is the brightness. Eee! Really JJ cruising on today. So what are, are we in uh, service switch? Where's our service switch here? Is that bias? And here's this. What is this switch? I don't even see the vertical tube glowing. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. Maybe it's got air in it. I don't know, I kind of think this might not be making contact because I moved this around and it does weird stuff. I, I think that maybe the service switch, anytime you get a collar set and there's no vertical, you always want to come and play with the verticals. The 
service switch and now I got a now I got a line again there so and what I don't get about this is the focus control has no effect the CRT bias control has no effect and I don't think the screens have an effect I try something here for a minute I'm gonna go full voltage Why do I feel totally sketched out by this? Like, what the hell is that? It's kind of weird. This tube is cool. This should be burning hot. That should smoke my fingers. This tube is cool, too. That should smoke my fingers. That's warm. That's warm. This 6GH8 should have a, a cover on it. That's not right. It should have a metal shield. That's warm. That's warm. That's warm. Why are these not... These 6GU7s, they should be hot, very hot. Well, they're not even glowing. That would uh, explain why there's no control over the functions. It doesn't explain why the vertical is not working, but the vertical not working, what the hell that is. Well, this was jammed. What is this, the FM antenna? This was jammed down in the vertical and when I pulled it out there was a spark. This was like jammed under the vertical uh, tube socket. Ooh, do we have vertical now? We have nothing. Maybe we do have vertical. Yeah, that's too high. 300 milliamps is too too high. It's too high. Go back. Something's up there. Something's up with the high voltage too. It should not be that high. And we lost the picture. Yeah, it looks like we lost. Looks like we 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 lost high voltage. We have 900 volts there now. It's nothing. So something, something took a dump. Yep, something, something went wrong. Let's see what we have here. Uh, 4,000 volts AC. Seems low. Listen to this sound when I go into bypass. Listen to this. Almost sounds like the flyback is arcing internally. I believe the, the rectifier, the 3A3, went to air, and I'll show you why. When I lift this up, watch the plate current. I'm going to go into bypass. That actually sounds like it has high voltage. And it does, and it has vertical deflection now. But look at how... It 
This thing has issues, lots of issues. Oh, we know these tubes aren't heating up and that could be, I see some green corrosion there, see that? These wires are known to corrode and open on top. This thing needs a lot of work. These tubes are not getting hot and it'll never work right unless those are working. Um, yeah, I think what we do is we abort right here and we pull that out and start with getting that to work. Just a little note on how this is connected and look at these capacitors. These are all the wrong capacitors. That big clunking thing and those ones with the red ends and these early Japanese blue ones, those are all open and baked out. Lots of germanium transistors. It's got a nice banana slicer though. Um, oh, the blambulance. Note on how this is connected. Or did they actually engineer this smart enough that you couldn't hook it up wrong? Uh, maybe they did. They did, actually. This one's big, that one's round, and that one's small. Yes. The Blambulance. Usually I always really kind of respected RCA, you know, but looking at this, this thing just has quality deficit disorder. Uh, how do you even get this capacitor out of here? It's completely wrapped underneath all these wires and all these wires are so tight. How do you how do you service this? I mean I know it's possible but it's going to be a real struggle. How do you get to these capacitors here? And this board is all one continuous board. Am I complaining here? Yeah, this, this thing leaves a little bit to be desired. And these are those automotive bulbs. What, 194, 197? The little ones that, like courtesy lights and uh, dash illumination and look at how silver they are from all the tungsten evaporation yeah this really they left the quality out before the name went on on this thing this thing is uh this thing's got issues and i have a feeling that that's a lot of tube socket issues i bet i bet that's tube socket issues with those 6GU7s because they're not even tight. They're just they're just kind of they're real loose. Well, I think this is going to be a resurrection. I sort of wanted to restore it and use it, but I think it's going to be can we make it work? Yeah, I got to figure out how do you can't believe this this is almost like disposable start with this and see if I can get this working what is this thing about two or three watts per channel if that but these are nice speakers so if I could get that working then I think the key here is pull this thing out and put it in the jig um, this is it's really difficult to work on these combos to try and reach over and reach around and all that Sanchez type stuff. So I'm going to just pull that chassis out and put it on the jig and, and uh, service it that way. I'm digging around trying to find the schematic for the little tuner thing. And uh, this is where the book comes in handy that the online Sam's lookup thing does not. See, that thing was an HH820. If we look up HH820, we get the TV chassis only. But it looks like the closest we might be able to get is 930 7. Huh. 
actually they don't show it here do they now uh, here's the here's the tv part but i think we need 930-7 and see if that's close well that sam's wasn't even remotely close so what i did is i found this and this is actually the exact combo unit and this right here has the HHA20 Halmstad and this has the exact tuner in it which is a RC1227 and that is covered in this uh, original manual here which is great but let's look look up that uh, RC1227 in SAMS and see if they cover it too. So according to this, RC1227C is covering an 894.6, which is what this says, the tuner that's in there. Okay, yes, that, that definitely looks like this horrible thing. And here's what they're showing it in. 67 I took a couple pictures of it if I can't deal with the factory manual then I shouldn't be working on electronics I guess here's this beautiful thing here's the schematic and uh, I mean to start we know the filters are bad and there's basically four things in that paper tube there's uh, 1500 and then four one thousands so that should be fairly easy. It's just going to be getting to it. And maybe this maybe this thing separates and it falls out the bottom. I don't know. It doesn't even look like... I don't know. There's got to be a way to take it apart. Uh, RCA did really make good stuff. I bet it really performs well, or it did when it was new. There's a statement. 3IF. 3IF stages... Here's the stereo decoder, all PNP germanium, 1966 of course it would be. I think I'll just take some pictures of this. It's a lot more portable. This is what I like about the factory service data. It has so much more info than Sam's does. Here's your stereo alignment procedure, which I photocopied this in the Sam's. This is fairly easy. We just use the ST1000A and dial it right in. Although being solid state, it might not need to be dialed in, but being high hour, it might need to be dialed in. So there's some conflicting data all right rca make a fool out of me make me your little bitch i take everything i said nasty about you back you are my hero actually it's fairly well designed and fairly serviceable see i make stupid of myself speaking like that all right, I've been going through testing all of these with the uh, ESR tester, and this one, as we know, is a four-section electrolytic. It's got a 1500 at 35 and three 1000s, uh, and they're all dead. But the nice thing is they're all soldered to this terminal strip right here. So if I just delete this, delete this out of here, um, I could just put new capacitors right there on that terminal strip, which is very convenient. Uh, these test okay. I don't know. They could be shorted or leaky. These test okay. Uh, they could be shorted or leaky. That one's okay. That one's okay. These blue ones with, with the date code of 66 are bad. So there's three of them. They're, the ESR is like 30 ohms or more on those. But these, these are those early Japanese caps. And very American made except for foreign and domestic parts. 
the driver inner stage driver transformers are kind of small which would suggest you know, limited low end response kind of kind of bad sound usually when your transformers are real small like you look at these on a magnavox astrosonic they're you know, three times that big they're like that and that's you know that's where your your kind of sound quality comes from the size of your transformers I don't know why I don't know if that's factual and scientific but it sure does seem to be a thing that the smaller transformers sound more like a you know a pocket radio okay here's what we got so here's the electrolytic which is totally dried out and so we have a 1500 and then three one thousands so we got 1500 at 35 a thousand at 35 a thousand 25 a thousand at 15 we have a nice power strip. You can see how it's all connected here. It's going to be real easy. I got a, they didn't have a 1500, so I got a 220 at 35, and then I got three 1000s at 35. I got a bunch of 10s here. I got some good control cleaner. This is good stuff. It's got uh, silicone uh, lube in it. It's almost like... Uh, what do they call that stuff? Personal lube. Um, it's just slick and slippery and chemically and toxic and all of that. And I got an, an old oxygen sensor here. And what I like to do with these is these use high temperature Teflon wire. So what I do is I strip this off and I use this as the insulation on the capacitors. Always save old oxygen sensors. Go to a local shop and ask them for a bunch of old ones and use this as your insulation tubing because it does not melt it does not degrade it does not crack it just like non-biodegradable it will be around forever ptfe teflon wire these are all common ground so basically the ground is also tied to the chassis here so real easy to recap it's just going to be a bunch we're going to cut this thing out and then there's going to be a bunch of capacitors in here instead of one big one everything seems to be working okay here yeah what's up all right let's go yeah you can do this let's go what's up so i brought the transformer and everything seems to be working good here as you can hear except i was doing some dc voltage checks and on the positive this is the capacitor that couples the audio to the speaker and there should be tw 24 volts and then 12 volts on the capacitor being in the middle of the two transistors. And it's like 23 volts. It's like there's a bias issue on both channels. So if we look at this, you can see we have 22 volts there and we have 23 volts there. So we got a bias issue. So on the, uh, let's see, I think this is where the voltage comes in right here, 28 volts. And then it should be half of that right here, it's not. So there's a definite, on both channels. I replaced this, I put a 12 volt automotive bulb in there. Oh, and the stereo indicator is not coming on. I don't know if it's stereo or not. I need another speaker. ran behind more sort of traditional Republican candidates. 
Music Station. 102.7 KISS FM. Yep, Megan Trainer with a new one. Megan. I need to get another speaker. I need to see if it's stereo or if the... Let's see, is that a light bulb or is that an LED? So if we look at this... You can see it says uh, basically so why am I not seeing it right now 12.4 volts so it should have 24.2 there and then basically half of it on the positive of that capacitor and we don't on both channels it's like 26 volts here and like 23 volts here so there's some kind of biasing issue, but I certainly don't hear it, and both channels sound even. Well, the stereo indicator lamp is definitely open. I measured the voltage coming out of it. The way it works, it's definitely a light bulb, as you can see there. So it comes up to a 470 ohm resistor, and then it comes over here to the... Uh, Come on, focus. 19 volt source. So that might be a 12 or a 6 volt lamp through a 470 ohm resistor. And then it goes over. It goes over to this point, which it's interesting. It says 22.5 volts there. So when the when it, it gets stereo activity or 38 kilohertz activity. From the 38 kilohertz amp it biases that transistor on and pulls that 22.5 volts to ground or, or low it pulls it low not to ground probably but um, so what are we probably looking for a 24 volt lamp very low current I did grab a bag of some light bulbs here so I'm gonna go through some of these units will not actually go into stereo mode if that lamp is open I don't think this is one but there's a lot of these that require that lamp for the stereo to work the stereo is working I can hear it here I got one speaker there one speaker here it is working Love me some Backstreet Boys. This one seems to work pretty good. I don't just don't know how to put it in there. I don't know if I'm going to put it in there. It doesn't seem to affect the performance. So, hear that distortion? There's a distortion. I have it. I have the input hooked here to the Direct TV box. I'm using the the radio stations on the Direct TV box, and there's a distortion to it that I don't hear on FM. It, it's really annoying, and it sounds like an under bias issue. It really does. I'm really thinking there's something that. That voltage in between those two transistors should really be half the supply voltage. It, it, it shouldn't be... The transistors are not working right. You know, but it doesn't seem to sound like that on FM. But FM also doesn't quite have the same bass hit that the DirecTV audio uh, line has. So I, I gotta see if I can figure out why that bias is off like that fruits and vegetables and as real people listen to the I distortion the success of balance of nature going from a back room in my practice to millions of servings of fruits and vegetables being served to the world every single day to the simple fact that it works as a special holiday sounds like a bias issue 
So what sets up the bias in this thing, which is how these transistors are just basically turned on to conduct, is these resistors in here. And you can see that uh, it's basically 390 ohm, 3.9 ohm, 3.9 ohm. It's, all, it's just a series of 390 and 3.9 ohm resistors. And see how they're all encased in this dotted line here? Well, that happens to be one of those little couplet things. If you can see this brown thing right here next to the two driver transformers, there's this little brown thing on the board. That is these resistors. Now, when working on this, you would, you would never expect a similar fault to be on both channels as we have here, which seems to be lack of bias and improper bias having the, the, the wrong voltage in the center point of the two transistors. But since what we're looking at is this couplet, it's very possible that these have all drifted kind of equally, if that makes sense. They're kind of all, I think, there's like a ceramic little board inside that thing and they're kind of printed on there and I don't see any bumps in it maybe I do you know this is what the big problem in the predicted televisions and usually when you do a full Philco predictor restore you rebuild all these little couplets couplets couple See, I think I got one here. There you go. Oh, so Couplet was a registered trademark of Centralab. Anyway, that's basically what it is. And, and this is, of course, for all American 5 tube radios, this is the detector circuit. So this has the, the, um, all the capacitors and resistors in it for the detector tube, but this couples the detector to the audio output, I believe, and the volume control, but this is basically what a couplet is, couplet. It couples or it coops two things together. Well, unfortunately, those are the pins to that couple right there, so I can try and get in here and get it out, or I could cut this right here and bend it up but I'm not going to pull the board out that's way too destructive I might try and get to it here I gotta I gotta see how I want to do this figure this out I should add that I did check the resistors as best I could in circuit and they're all over the place the ones that are 390 are measuring like 450 or more um, and I have a feeling the reason why they use this couplet is because those are more of a precision resistor than just a standard uh, carbon comp. You know, they probably want those to be like 10% or better, or maybe even 5%. Well, RCA, sorry. Our relationship didn't work out, so we had to split. Baked. Baked. Check this out. Both of these, I believe they're supposed to be 390 or measuring 850 baked. That's one. That's the, the red wire is ground, and I'll show you what I mean. This is the other one. Again, it measures 900 ohms. How could it go from 390 to 900? I mean, that would make sense that both of them are equally high, and that's why both channels are equally twacked. This one is supposed to be 319 and it's, or I'm sorry, this one's supposed to be 390 and it's gone down. Well, this one's supposed to be 392 and it's gone down. So that's what I'm saying, it like failed because the resistors are all in the same encapsulated thing. They all failed equally. That's why both channels are equally jacked up. Here's what we got. We got 390 at 2%. We got 3.9 at 5%.
we got a drill bit because we're going to have to make the holes a little bigger so two leads will fit through. So I'm getting this together and there's there's really no way for me to explain it other than you just have to look at the schematic of the couplet and figure it out and you see how I'm staggering the resistors. If you look at this you can see that that couplet was getting so hot it actually see how it discolored that that connector there. So the 39 390 ohm resistors are going to go on the top and the 3.9 ohm resistors are going to go on the bottom. Uh, that's all I can do. I can't there's just not enough room. I'll try to do the best I can, but it's Kurz Barva Clorver Dar Barbalarjo Flarfer. Okay, here it is all assembled. And like I said, there's you just have to take your time and figure it out. These are all the 3.9 ohm on the bottom. And then after you get done, go through pin by pin and with an ohm meter and just make sure that you get it right. So this this should be uh, diaperlicious right here. And there, that's soldered back together. So let's power it up and hope it doesn't fry those germanium transistors. Okay, wish me luck. Here we go. Remember, we're looking for what 14 volts here. Ooh, it's a lot better. It's a lot better. Okay, here's the other side. Well, that one's, well, we're a volt off between the two. That's kind of disappointing, but I can't, I guess with, uh, I wanted to say lithium ion transistors. No, with uh, germanium transistors, you know, whatever, we're one volt difference, but we're at least we're not way off you know I would have expected better with two percent resistors but with uh, these crappy transistors you know you just can't and the bias now that's measuring between base and emitter that's how much the transistor is just kind of turned on uh, DC wise is sitting at 136 millivolts now it was like 89 millivolts before Oh my, I can't believe the difference. It's clean now. It's so much cleaner. It actually sounds good. I, I cannot believe the difference. It's mind blowing. Well, maybe it's not. So I think what I'm going to do is in this video here, it's kind of gone on pretty long. And we'll reinstall this in the combo unit, the RCA combo unit in part two. And get more into the TV side of it. We'll try and get the TV, the CTC25 chassis to work and actually produce a picture. Uh, this is a very high hour set. I mean, somebody really ran the hell out of this combo. Now those resistors down there, they are warm. So there's a bit of power dissipation in this resistor. So anyway, uh, we don't see a lot of resistor failures on this channel. And um, you know, DC voltages when, when working on an amplifier, you know, checking your DC voltages on your output stage and your voltage drops is kind of critical when it comes to making sure the biasing is right if you have a distortion problem. And I think the main reason why I checked the DC voltages on this is because we had one distorted channel. 
that was before I recapped it when it was in the cabinet so it'll be interesting to see in part two when we put this thing back in how it sounds so anyway uh, that's an interesting failure and something different for this channel so very cool uh, we'll do part two as soon as I can get a weekend when there's no weather because it's just been kind of raining every weekend